Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. In the beginning of this chapter, we covered the ten virgins with their lamps. I want to... I want to include for your home study, along with that, Zechariah chapter 4, the seven uh, stemmed candle, the seven lighted candle stand that had a reservoir. The reservoir is what we're talking about that the oil is supposed to be in. And there again, Eliyah is the oil that's in it, the olive oil, the oil of the very mount that he's delivering this message from. To those 7,000 election that have a purpose, that have a life, that have a leading from Almighty God, as it is written. So what a fantastic teaching. And then he likened um, the kingdom of heaven to that wedding. And he's going to liken it again. What does it mean when he likens the kingdom of heaven to something? Almighty God, through the Son takes uh, normal everyday things, things you use every day or at least are very familiar with, and gives you an analogy of what it's going to be like when he returns. That is to say, in the eternity. So, we get to start with a real fresh thought, chapter 25, verse 14. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name. Let's go with it. 14, and it reads, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, I repeat, own servants, not someone else's, his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. This means that his goods were delivered to his own servants, let's say the disciples as an example, or you today that God grants wisdom from the word, uh, he delivered his goods to trade with or to invest. Uh, the, the Greek is very specific on it. And he went away. That's as it is with Christ himself, as he stood on this, or as he was on this Mount of Olives, about to take this far journey. And he has given us many precious gifts, knowledge, wisdom in his word, and then he has that way of blessing us with all of the things as he, as he adds them on to us. That's what it's like. But you can, you can um, relate that to a very common event in daily life where you're, you're with somebody, you're his servant, and he goes on a long trip and says, keep running my business. Whatever your profession might be, liken it to that if you like. But also it has a very strong spiritual connotation. So let's not forget that. 15. And unto one he gave five talents. To another, two. And to another, one. Boy, that seems unfair. Well, stick around a minute. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. It's important that you know God blesses you with what you can take care of. No more, no less. So, in a sense, I know we all fall on hard luck at times, and that's beside the point. But basically, when all is said and done, when you have put forth your labor as a servant to the Father, you have what you have in your hand about what he thinks you can take care of. And uh, it, though it be much or though it be little, uh, he equals things whereby each person is playing on an equal or level playing field. I, I shouldn't say equal, but on a level playing field. He's very fair. It would not be right to give the one he only gave one to when he had a one towel and ability to give him five. It'd get him in trouble. He couldn't handle it. Wouldn't know what to do with it. So remember, at the same time, God expects much more 
from the man he gives five talents, then he does one. And he will judge that man accordingly. Why? Because the gifts were given by God himself, and he expects fruit to be produced on the ability of the individual. Notice several, um, uh, uh, to his several ability, we all have different talents. And, and I don't want to confuse the word talent as it's used here in the Greek. That, that is a sum, all right? It's a, it's, a, it's a very strange, it has a very strange meaning. You, you probably should check it out for yourself, you with Strong's, the word talent as it is used here, and you'll, the um, spiritual connotation will just fall right on your head. But by, by gifts, I mean talents of our talent of visiting with people, talking with people, uh, sh planting seeds among people, uh, so forth. Your personality, that's a gift. And that's a talent that God gives you. And at the same time, though, he turns over. This word is so priceless. It's the greatest gift God could give you is to open your mind whereby you had an understanding and, and to put it in a worldly uh, figure of speech. You got it made. If you know what tomorrow brings, basically, you know how to not only invest God's talents, but your own, all right? It gives you a great advantage in this world, but be that as it must, the wise with their abilities, if God has chosen, are in fine shape. If not, well, you're where God wants you, and well, I shouldn't say that because that isn't true. Many are slothful, they do, they do not come up to the expectations of God, and therefore they suffer. But basically, I'm talking to his own servants. What is a servant? A servant is someone that has agreed through one form or the other to serve the master, in this case, Christ, uh, and our Father. So we're talking about Christ, uh, Christ men are Christ, Christians were by people that would follow him. All right, it's what it's written to, 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded, that's he, in, in uh, what is it, Luke, it's used occupy, but it still means the same thing, invest, traded with the same, and made them other five talents. What percentage is that? 100%. That's good, all right, 100%. I want you to remember that. That's why I emphasize it. Verse 17. And likewise, he also uh, that had received two, he also gained another two. What percentage is that? That's 100%. Do you see how fair God is? He expects, he knows our abilities when you're really in touch with him and you have what he uh, knows that you can handle as you mature and as you grow and so forth, all right? Uh, verse 18. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Now, I'm going to read something into this that I usually don't, that comes through my mind, but I feel spirit-led to mention it. What is man made of? Earth, clay. I, I mean, we are what our mothers partook of as far as nutrition, um, minerals, uh, and so forth. And it, it formed these flesh bodies. And then when we were on our own, when the umbilical cord was cut, it's what we partake of. We are what we eat, literally. I'm speaking of flesh now, uh, separating from the spirit. But in a sense, I suppose the reason I want to mention this is it's very strange that he would hide it in the earth, that God would use this terminology. And it's kind of like he hid his own talents within himself. All right? I want you to see that. Because I, I, I really believe that's what our Father wants us to know from this. He took what God had given him and held it within himself. And, and I'll use, I'll borrow one of Christ's parables. It would be like lighting a candle and putting a bushel over it. What good is it? 
who wants it to be light under a bushel that no one can see under or uh, through? It certainly can't give off any light because the bushel will contain the light. Sure, it's light in the bushel, but what good does that do as far as investing is concerned? Nothing. Zip. Nada. And that's what this person had done. But he's taking good care of the Lord's talent. There's just one problem. That's not what the Lord told him to do with it. And if you don't obey the Lord, you're headed for trouble, friend. Verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. He's going to check out accounts here, okay? He's going to compare the accounts, we might say. Get the books out. Now, naturally, this entire sermon on the Mount of Olives has to do with the return of Messiah. I don't feel we're very far away from that. So, Christ has taken his return and has broken it into segments whereby uh, have you been serving him? You're kind of going to find out how he divvies things up here a little bit, okay? And yet it's fair. No one can find any fault with it. It is fair. So, Christ has returned. And this is what happens. Verse 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, 100%, saying, Lord, thou deliverest to, unto me five talents. Behold, look, I have gained beside them five talents more. I'm sure he was proud, okay, 100%. Now, I want you to remember these words that Christ is about to speak. It's important. So the reason I ask you, 21, remember the saying. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. That's a very humbling thought, is it not? That the Lord would say, You've been faithful over a few things when he really thinks, Boy, I, I, I made it. I got it. I made it big. Over a few things. That just humbles us down where we should be. And it's good for you to be humbled occasionally. Over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many, I repeat, many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. That, that's the place we all want to be, where it's joyful. All of life is a joy when you're with him, as it will be through the millennium, being able to teach and lead and uh, be in a spiritual body away from the pains and the weaknesses of our flesh bodies, you know, where perhaps some of us won't even be sinners anymore, you know, as, as we all do occasionally, unfortunately. But I want you to remember what he said, thou good and faithful servant, you know, I'm going to make thee ruler over many things, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Be happy with me. That's what Jesus is saying. 22. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, look, I have gained two other talents beside them. Again, remember, 100%. Now, I want you to signify or note the difference that God rewards the two talent against the two horsepower against the five horsepower. I'll put it that way and let it be a polysendon, which says a great deal more than is actually stated, so you'll understand. 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Well, that's, that's the same thing that he told the old five horsepower boy. Same words. Faithful servant, well done, good. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Well, that's the same. I will make thee ruler over many things. That's the same. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The exact duplicate reward to the two horsepower as to the five. This will, if you will understand what our Father has done here, it will help you a great deal with jealousy 
uh, and kind of selfishness as far as your seed planting or as your work for the Father, and it will certainly keep you out of the argument that occasionally two of the disciples would uh, have or discussion I will say rather than argument as to which was going to be greater in the kingdom of heaven all right it's kind of up to him right and remember if your talents if if you're a five horsepower Christian know this God expects more from you he expects a great deal more from you and, and you're not going to get any more recognition from it. And so many people might, might, I say, let that place them on an ego trip. But you better always remember, God said, you may think you're five horsepower and that's big stuff, but to me it's just a few little old bitty things. And I gave you I gave you what you have anyway. Both the gift, that is to say your abilities to prosper, as well as the material to prosper with, or to trade with, to occupy with. You see, God gives us everything we have, and it's all His anyway, including ourselves. So be very careful. Remember Satan's main trick. I don't know why I'm throwing this in here. Maybe somebody needs it. I don't know. Satan's main trick is to blow you up, tell you what a great person you are, how gifted you are, to get you to think or in a position of thinking about self, how, how important you are to the people, you know, the, the ones you share with, really, you know, just that you are so skilled at it after all. You must be really something special. And then you'd better stop and that's Satan's talk, all right? And realize everything you have, God gave you. And I don't care if you're really super gifted, he expects you to use that ability to its utmost. I, I don't want to put anybody on a guilt trip that they don't do enough here. I don't want to do that. He, he divides it up where it's equal and it's no burden. So don't try to make a burden out of what I'm saying. I'm just saying our gifts come from God and the glory goes to Him. And we are all equally servants, that is to say those that serve Him. Now we got one coming up here that didn't serve Him. He really didn't. He went just about 180 degrees reverse of what God wanted him to do. But the rest of us, we're kind of equal. We all share, we're one body and we all share equally. Example, I will take this ministry for a moment. I don't get any more of a reward from this ministry than the uh, smallest person or, or the person that plants the least seed is what I mean for the ministry or anything else, whether it be by word or whatever, that, um, that he, he will receive the same reward I do. Now, perhaps um, in heaven, it, the abilities are still the same. He expects, if he gives you uh, abilities for you to use them. Okay, I think, I think we've hammered that enough, but the main thing I want you to see that though we have different amounts that God gave to various people, the percentages are the same. That he expects that percentage and the gift is the same. All right, got it? Verse 24. Well, it's going to be for a little bit here. There is one thing that will offset it a little bit. 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. In other words, I know that you go out here and expect to harvest wealth or, 
our souls from a certain thing and you didn't do the strawing or the cultivating or the planting. I'll tell you what, how would you like to go, if, if whatever your profession is, how would you like to go to the head honcho tomorrow, the head guru of your operation and say something like that to him? I think he would probably say, what do you think I have you for? You know, the head honcho would say that to you. What do you think I have you for? Okay, I imagine the Lord felt the same way. Verse 25, and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast. That is thine. Here it is. And he opens his little hanky and pulls it out and hands it over. It's all yours. Here it is back. Think of the waste, dear one. A life, a child of God that God created, gave soul, expected something from him or he wouldn't have given him the talent in the first place. So it is one he could have as easily or easier Perhaps that could be a discussion. Is it easier to work with one talent than, than five? I, well, I would think so, but be that, be that as it is, may. And he wasted a lifetime. He did not exercise the gifts and hid the talent. He actually hid what God had given him to work with. And I might say to those that God blesses with truths, you'd better share them. You know, sometimes you have these little truths that you think, that is, I see that and I think, and that would be very difficult to explain. I think I'll just hang on to that for a while. Better be careful, my friend. Now, I don't want to put anybody on a guilt trip on this because the Father does give things to certain people that he expects them that it is private, all right? It's not to be, which is the case of most so-called visions. It's not for anybody but you. No one else would understand it, and they would think you were a nut if you brought it up in the first place. It's for you. Don't ask someone else to explain it to you because they weren't there. How could they tell you? You, he expects you to know. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sidetrack myself here if I'm not careful, but what a waste of life that God gave him the gift and now he won't use it. He didn't use it. Took it out and hid it. And the expectations of the father could be nothing but utter disappointment. What if one of your children did you that way? Think about it. Utter disappointment. All right? God likes to be happy or proud about his children. He likes for them to do well and he gives them things to do well with. And, and some might say, I'll just muse and meditate a moment within my own mind here. One might say, well, I could have lost it. Don't be a fool. Because if God gave you something to trade with, he'll see that it's replaced and that you, if you'll get up and try again, if you don't ever try something, you're going where? Nowhere. Don't be afraid to try something that you feel you've done your research, you have um, been blessed, and people like you. And then someone has a problem and they come up to you and say, what do you think I should do in this case? Then that's possibly a time that God is saying, plant the truth right here I've got a barbed spear and the truth is going to stick in that mind and one little seed can make all the difference in the world. I'll never forget the first little barb that yanked me when I was a young person and was trying to study and one person said, isn't it wonderful to know where America is mentioned in God's word? And I said, yes, it would be. And the dude walked on off and I knew I would be seeing him the next day and he was gone for a little bit before it finally sunk in up here what he had said. And I said, I want that. I want to know where we, America, 
is mentioned in the Word of God. I'd kind of always felt like, a, personally, quite frankly, by traditions of men, I'd kind of always felt like an outsider. You know, and I, I wanted to have, have a part in how you do have a part in the Word. See, one little seed can make a big bunch of difference. Not only to that life, but maybe thousands of lives. You never know. God does. So this little one could have hooked someone with the truth. Uh, like or dislike my terminology, I'll leave it as is. Hooked. And because I had used barb in a prior sentence. Hooked them. And that one that he hooked might have been a hundred talent person. You see, if God chose to give him that many to trade with. So you see, never count or discount or try to equate God's doings for you will always find an, a level playing field. He is fair to all and he will take care of you. All right, well, perhaps I've digressed considerably to some, but I, I think perhaps not. I think maybe, maybe we all needed to take a, a, a real close look at this poor, miserable wretch that would take God's beautiful truth and hide it in the earth or in earth man and never share it, never invest it, never try. What a waste. Okay, next verse, please. And the next verse, 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful, that lazy servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not. No, but you know I expect it. That's what I have you for. And gather where I have not strawed. I, in other words, I try to reap, but I only find your neglect is all I find in this case, because there wasn't anything there to reap. Not one little light had been lit by this lazy, negligent individual. But hey, don't face Christ with that on your conscience. You know what I mean? When he returns, I hope that you're not that type. A little uh, one talent. There's nothing wrong with being a one talent person. I know that God through the Son would have given the one talent man, if he had gained a talent, the exact same um, uh, promise or reward that he did the five and the two. So don't ever hold back on the Father. Take what you have and work with it. He expects it. And that's where his blessings come from. Otherwise, this man missed out on everything because he missed out on every blessing of God. And now, unfortunately, he doesn't have too much to look forward to for the eternity. Think about it. Verse 27. Thou oughtest, this is what you should have done if, if that's all you could do. Thou oughtest, therefore, to have put my money to the exchangers. You should have put it to the bankers, the money changers. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. I could have at least had a little interest on it. You see, the degradation within that statement is considerable because... God's gifts uh, in relationship to money, yes, gifts of usury, uh, not necessarily usury, but an increase in that is beautiful and it's wonderful and it is God's gift. But he missed everything else as well. That is to say his skill, the gifts God had given him, the friendship where he could have befriended someone, missed. He said, you would have been better off with my judgment had you done that. 28, this is what happens. Take therefore the talent from him. Take it away from him. And give it unto him which hath ten talents. So he's got 11. 
Now, uh, so uh, in other words, he knew he could trust the one that had ten, that it would be put to good use for the master, not the servant. That's important. I'm going to say that one more time. It puts it to good use, not for the eleventh talent servant, but for the master. He does the harvesting, but he also gives the gifts and he also gives the blessings. Be very careful, my friend, about hiding your talent. Um, and, and again, I'm not trying to put anyone on a guilt trip. And I, I, what I'm saying is, perhaps a person only has one talent. I, I don't want to, to raise your expectations to a five-talent person. It's, God doesn't expect it. You know what you can do, do it. And be happy with it. Join the joy of the Lord in knowing that, the, that you will have the same reward as every other child of God in the eternity. He took it away from him. What did he have left? You got it, not a zero, zip. Verse 29, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance, not just a little bit, abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Put your trust in the Father. If he gives you a gift, when you step forward, he'll help you with the words. He'll help you with the deed. And the, I'm going to give you a secret, how to be a winner. It's always worked for me. The main way, the main way to be a winner is to never quit. You may lose a few times and that's fine, nothing wrong with losing, but if you never give up sooner or later, you're going to win. You're going to hit on the right combination, woo, wrong word, I'm not talking about gambling or games of chance here, but the combination in life that works for you, you will have what in broadcasting is called it. Nobody can explain it. Whether a program has it or not, you can't buy it. It's just that when a vast audience hears it, if they like it, it has it. And that goes, that's not only in teaching, it has to do with regular programming on, on networks. It's got it. So. Sooner or later, you're going to find, and I'll use that, it. And it will work for you. And as well, no one can explain it, really, what it is, until it's actually tried before the vast numbers of people. So think about it. Always try. Never give up. So you stumble. Don't get depressed. That's a trick of Satan. Come back up fighting. March, make the next hill. You can do it. And pretty soon God's going to say, oh, he's not slothful. That means lazy. I'm going to, he's that old pax about to get him. Let's send a little angel there. And I probably shouldn't say this. But God will send help. And you will succeed. He'll feel sorry for you pretty soon, but proud of you and say, let's just help him out and make sure he makes it this time. It'll all work as long as you keep this thing in gear that's inside your forehead and don't allow anyone to play with it. You'll do fine. Okay, uh, next verse. I've lost my place here. Verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. That's all he had anyway. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm afraid there will. Why? Because he has given us in this Sermon on the Mount the exact logical order of events that shall transpire, that consummate the end of this age. You remember back to 24, uh, verse 3, I believe it is, that said, Tell us, when is the end going to be, and what will be the signs and that the events happening at your coming, well, he's told you. And even this parable is of his coming and what he's going to do when he gets here. 
I don't know, I might say, how are you fixed for talents, friend? It wouldn't be fair to say, how are you fixed for talents? It would be better to say, what are you doing with them? Think about it. Uh, and again, it's always a joy to serve him. And I think it's so loving that he states here that, that and unto one that he gave five, another two, and to another one. To every man, according, I repeat, according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. He's returning. He's coming back. But he gives everyone ability. You do have ability. You're a can-do type person. And you take what you have and work with it, and it will grow. It will grow. Your abilities understand what I'm talking about. Never give up. Your father will always say, it's his promise. You'll do good as long as you do your homework. And never attempt anything that you're not experienced at. We have people that say, well, that means I'm supposed to go teach the Word, and they're biblically illiterate. How are you going to teach the Word? if you're ignorant about it. That's, that's dumb. It really is. And, and pretty soon, you go out then and you got some blind leading the blind and someone falls in the ditch and guess who Christ is going to ex hold responsible for it? You. For misleading people. So I mean, you got to always... Um, God expects professionals, all right? And with His gifts, we are professionals. His Word makes us professionals because it is the Word that is the power. It is the Word that is the authority. It is the Word that gives us the authority when you grow skilled within it. That that is very complicated, true, uh, to say true wisdom is to take that that might be difficult for some and simplify it whereby all can understand. That, my friend, is true wisdom because Christ taught in such a simplistic way that everyone could understand using things such as investment like he just did to show the gifts he gives of reaching people and so forth. Because we experience those in daily life. You can relate to that. Isn't he good to us? He certainly is. Know something? He loves you. He's given you a gift. Use it. All right? Okay, bless your hearts. You listen a moment. Won't you please?